connect, serve and grow is what you can expect at the House of Reconciliation. Leadership, community, education, wellness and participation is part of our plan for your spiritual growth and success. Family and faith is a core value for the House of Reconciliation, working to help people find their purpose, want to make an impact in the kingdom, ready to tap into your future. Meet us at the House Sundays with Pastor Reginald Campbell, www.houseofreconciliation.org. everybody good 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 while you're standing we're going to do our church anthem want to welcome all of you in uh, to the broadcast the early bird service this morning at the house of reconciliation here at the greenville campus 1427 sweet e launch road feel free anytime to come and be a part of our in service we want to welcome those in from the greenwood campus as well as to those that are a part of our virtual campus we have our first virtual uh, campus a member, Brother Ray Simmons, who's in Ohio, he called me last night, and he has, has to have a little bit of work done, a little bit of surgery, so he's in the hospital. I ask you and those that are prayer believers to pray for him as he go through this little procedure. Just want him to know that you're in our prayers. Thank you and for all those that are having challenges uh, across this nation. Some of them were inflicted upon you, were not caused by you but it's caused by life and circumstances so we don't take that for granted we're going to do our church anthem our theme is simple connect serve and grow and that's what we're going to do and we're just entering into the month of july and so i'm going to try to share some things with you that will be life-changing for you uh, this is the month that if you want to write real quick is application so we're going to do our church anthem and then i'm going to ask you oh man let's see where is the scripture I'm going to ask you to find 2 Corinthians 5 and 17. That will be our scripture. I hope I don't jack up the church anthem today. Uh, I sometimes jack it up because uh, I add stuff to it and leave stuff out. Yeah, but I can't look back there. Okay, I want you to buy me a TV so I can put it up there so then I can be on point. As I get older, I get some, some things, I think some boats and stuff are slipping. All right, y'all ready? I am the seed that grows and advances the kingdom. Now look at somebody and say, this is my month to start advancing. So don't you get jealous because I am going to move. All right. I am the seed that grows and advances the kingdom for what? This word, bread of life that I received today. It's not only for me, but to be shared with others that they may grow in Christ as well as myself for the purpose of successful living. Thank you. You may be seated. Uh, I always like to share with people the goal of the House of Reconciliation is to identify, ratify, and move on from past experience, experiences and grow in Christ. We started out, uh, I think where it got serious was we started talking about broken behind the smile. In the month of June, we know the month of June is the month of challenges. And so we share it with you in the month of June, beware of spiritual challenges and earthly stumbling blocks. We've identified two things, the adversary, the agitator, and this month we're going to identify what part we play in there. Just some for your own notes, uh, for those who don't understand the spirit realm in the spiritual world, you can read Genesis 2, 6, and 7, and it talks about that God created man, and then man became a living soul. So you're more than what you see in the mirror. Uh, John 4, 24 lets the believers know, for God is a spirit. And so sometimes we're out of tune because we see everything in the earthly realm. We don't see it in the spirit realm. And he says, for God is a spirit, and they that worship him. If we are the creation of God, then our lives should represent the spirit of God and not the influence of man. So it says, for God is the spirit and they that 
worship him must worship him in spirit which means it's more than tradition and religion it's more than church practices see a lot of people get hurt and they have church hurt because they broke a rule see many churches don't have forgiveness they just have traditions and rules and so when you worship God God is a forgiving God worship him in spirit and in truth see sometimes the antiquated things of the church are outdated for today's people that didn't go too far it's outdated so someone's asking you to function it's like having a DOS computer and having an i7 processor or i9 operator now it's like having 480 and now have an HD. See, sometimes the guidelines haven't met up with today's need of the people. So then we have to look at this. So here's what we're going to talk about this month. And, and really, if you look at the Bible, the Bible neurology, it talks about number one is unity. Number two is union uh, witness. Number three is resurrection. So the, t the two keys we're going to deal with is unity, resurrection, which is one and three and four and five and seven and seven is spiritual perfection completeness and this is where we're going to go so the whole month really i'm thinking for the rest of the year we're going to deal with this here it is unlocking the knowledge and opportunity for your future here's what happens if you don't have a plan your family doesn't have a plan if you, doesn't, if you don't have a plan, your children won't have a plan. If you don't have a seed, your children won't have a seed. So let me just go ahead and start out the first of the month, just bust everybody up. If you got a job, you don't have a vision. Because what God put into you wasn't for you to work for somebody until you retire. Someone sold you their process. And you're trying to hang on to a company so you can get to a retirement, and nothing's wrong with that. That's a wonderful thing and a great thing. But when you get to heaven, what do you think God is going to look at? The seed that he put in you or that you spent 35 years working for a company that gave you a gold watch and give you $300 a month? Now, go ahead, and, and, and we can have this conversation because we only got a few minutes together. Uh, somebody can say, well, I don't, I don't understand that. It's simple. How can you be the seed of Abraham when Abraham was an entrepreneur mm. and had his own mm. and then become the servant of humanity, a man? He said, I will bless your seed. He said in his text, he said that I will bless your hands. Mm -hmm. This is the time we're going to start looking into and at ourselves. Because, see, a company with a logo will make you think you're going to be there forever. I can tell you sitting behind the other side of the seat, they don't want you there but three to five years. They don't even want to give you benefits. Benefits are just a caviar to attract you, but then they don't plan for you to be there to get the full benefits. That's why now most industries have a pay scale, and it takes anywhere from seven to ten years to get the top pay. By that time, they expect to exit you out. But on the flip side of that, let me tell you what happened. If you're paying, making $20 an hour, they budget it for $50 an hour, so they're making $30 an hour off of you yes. on top of what they're giving you. And you think you're killing the game when you're getting overtime? You ain't killing the game. You're only getting one-fifth of what they have. You say facts. That's facts. And you say, well, worried about a company. Oh, Lord, am I going to have a job? Uh, uh, if you work your gift, your gift will always not only make room, but supply your need if you worked your gift. Yeah. See, if I was in the club, I'd drop the mic and go home. I can't let little Reggie come to church today. <laughs> little Reggie! You about to show up. So, so here's the thing. Unlocking the knowledge and opportunity of your future. Matthew 12, 45 says, Then goeth he and take it with himself seven other spirits more wicked than himself, and they enter in and dwell there. And the last state of that man is worse than the first day. Why would Satan bother someone 
who has no value. Now let me teach this to you real quick another way. If Satan has to gather imps and enemies and spirits to tear you down, then how do you not have value? If he's got to get an army to come at you, my question to you in the spirit realm, when do you build an army to go after him? He's not attacking your flesh. You know what he wants? He wants to destroy your spiritual inheritance and that will cripple your innate ability. And if he can cripple you, then he can cripple your children and your children's children. Because the Bible says a good man. Yes, sir. Let me tell you all something. An insurance policy is not good enough. Well, I got a I got a five hundred thousand dollars insurance. But if I die, they gonna make it. Five hundred dollars don't take you nowhere. It might get you some twenty fours and some ten. Again, everybody want to talk to me this morning? We just been together. Well, maybe five. If you want play some, play some. I think we might need a song right now because anybody, everybody, this first of mine is here. We are supposed to be working on pork, eating some pork and some ham today, cause some ribs. And then this man up a God, the man has called himself a man of God, and he's going to get up here and tell me that my insurance policy ain't nothing. Turn that channel, Bessie. I'm telling you. Here is number one. We have a spiritual immune. We have a very weak spiritual immune system. And I'm going to share something with you real quick. If you're a writer, I want you to write this. Sight is blinding. Sight is blinding. Ask me why. What's the difference between seeing it and planting it? If you see it, it's already done. That doesn't take faith. Faith is you have to plant it. So when you see it, you think you can just go to it. But you don't know how it was built. If you don't know how it was built, then you can't keep it together. That must have. So sight is blind. Oh, look at that. We got a house. You don't know how to keep the house together. You don't know where it was built. You don't know how many square footage it is. You don't know where the restrooms are. You don't know where the plumbing is. You don't know where to turn the water off in case the pipe broke. You just in the house. All out on the front floors. You know how y'all do. Got your cowboy hat on. Got your cowboy boots on. And if a pipe burst, you wouldn't even know where to look. Basement. First level, second level. You know why? why? Sight is blinding. When you see it, it's finished. What God instilled in you has to be birthed. It has to be birthed. And here is the catch. Many people are aborting their gifts. Yes, they are. Yes, they are. Can I talk to you real quick? You know why? Your gifts make you different. And the problem is you're trying to follow the crowd. And the crowd points you out and say, you're different. And so you get upset because you're different. And so then it starts messing with your, your, your in, innate ability because you want to fit in. Let me tell you something. Change cannot happen if there's no difference. One has to be different in order to make a difference. When, when most people criticize you, they are trying to tone you down rather than build you up. Because if they tone you down, then you won't show them up. Because your difference will make room for you. So wh here's what I want to say real quick. Stop focusing on who's in front of you and start pushing yourself and challenging yourself to maximize your gifts. 
How does that work? Because I've got a leader, I've got a supervisor, I've got a manager, whatever. Is in order for you to burst through the soil or for a seed to turn into a plant, it has to deal with friction. Friction, I want you to write, is a very strong part of progress. If you're not ready for the friction, then you can't embrace the progress. Because when you start progressing, there's a side of you that will hate you and there are other people that will echo that because of the spirits that want to get in your head. You have to stay focused on what did God give me. Stop trying to hide when your gift is trying to make you shine. Can I just talk to you for a minute? Because, see, you have these dreams. You have these visions. You Sometimes you sit down and write. But you wonder where you're going to go with it. God gave you the inspiration. You're going to have to take the tools and challenge yourself. Because what happens is darkness and your seed and the light are fighting for space in your mind. Your mind is the computer that generates the opportunity. And if darkness controls your mind, then your computer has viruses. And I think I wrote it, it leads parasitical infections that destroy our spiritual immune system by believing that we don't need God. We have more faith in our company than we have God. We have more faith in our associations than we have God. And God is saying to the church now, I want you to learn, because many people have been church hurt, Many people have been broken because they had a spiritual immune system because you don't know who's attacking you. You fell out with the church, and the church got issues. I'm not going to deny that. It's not God that has the issue. It's the people in the ministry that are not godly. So here's the thing. So if the enemy has to attack you with an army, why don't you pray and build an army for your protection? Unlocking the knowledge and opportunity for your future. You don't have enough. If Satan doesn't have enough to defeat you on his own, and he has to go get more imps that are more wicked than himself, why do you think you're the only one that can pray for you? You need to seek out prayer warriors. They, they may not be in your city. They may not be in your town. They may not be even in your country. But you need to be able to connect with them because they've been through, and some of them have a greater foresight than you. Is this making sense? Because then what happens is you start to begin to resetting of your mind. And so why is my, my mind need to be reset? It's simple. Jesus had in mind such a person when he spoke of one who tries to serve two masters. You can't build your gift and then be trapped by the company you're in. You can't build your gift and be trapped by the association you're in. What you have to do is go quiet and pace yourself because you're going to move in a different direction because if you let them know what your goals are or what your dreams are, come on, Joseph, then they will attack you. It's one thing to get beat up outside the house, and it's another thing to get beat up in the house. <laughs> Does that make sense? So here, here's the thing. Understanding that being different has two things that most people don't have. Are you ready for it? Knowledge and substance. When people see you, they think they see a finished product. The separator, you can call this a separator, is your knowledge and your substance which breaks down to four components, attitude, behavior, focus, and discipline. We can't worry about the one who can just take the test and pass it. That ain't us. We're the ones that's got to study and, and be disciplined, and, and, and it, it's challenging to us. I, ask me why. The one that just can pass it, they're going to do that with everything in their life. They're never going to be attached to anything. The one that has to struggle with it, 
and birth it. They have an internal connection. It becomes ingrained in them. It becomes a resource in them now. The one that just flies through, some of you got brothers and sisters, she can just pass the test and just go on through, and you had to grind, you had to grind, you had to grind. Well, see, here's the thing. At the end of the day, you have more knowledge and more substance. That's why I say sight is blinding, because you can see somebody, shoo, fast tracker, shoo, 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 and you're like, I'm still here, I'm still here, I'm still here, ain't nobody come get me, I'm still here. God has built you to walk out. Not someone give you favor. So you got to figure out which favor you want. You want the favor of man or you want the favor of God? See, when you have the favor of God, you don't owe anybody. When you have the favor of man, they want to call you, oh, that's my son, that's my daughter, oh, that's my protege. I'm not your protege. <laughs> because what they're saying is they made you. I'm going to give you all something that's a little thick. You need to own your maker because your maker owns you. And when you take ownership of your maker and that I am a child of God. And my gifts and my talents are not subs substance to man. You, 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 am I making sense? How can two walk together except they agree? Here's what I'm going to say. How can my gifts walk with you when you're trying to control them? Because the average person is used to being a part of the pack. We haven't even got to the scripture yet. As the old church would say, we got about eight minutes together. Now that I have your attention, <laughs> let us go in the wood of the law. One has to be different in order to make a difference. Here is something I want you to write and I want you to examine in the first part of this month. Are you in a fight with your gifts? Your gifts doesn't come in a package that shows up at the door. Your gift comes from your dreams. Your gifts comes from, I'm going to need them as a sponsor so I can't call their name. <laughs> but that is true. Uh, your gift comes by vision and, and it, it touches your innate ability. You, you have something that you didn't know that your great-great-grandfather had, that your great-great-grandmother had. You, you didn't know that people brought you here to serve, but they didn't understand that some of those people got on that boat were coming to lead. And you're angry about what a person or what a group did rather than thanking God for being on new soil. Because regardless of what soil you own, God didn't change. The pathway of birth and a baby is never beautiful. Well, I ain't seen one yet. Y'all say what y'all want to say. So you're focusing on how you got here rather than seeing you belong here. That's why, number one, unity is, is, is there. Number three, resurrection. If you can't kill it, you can't rise from it. Perfecting spiritual development. This, that's why I asked you earlier, fighting with your gifts. You cannot perfect what you will not accept. You cannot overcome what you will not acknowledge. You cannot master what you refuse to embrace. These are the things that we have to break down and realize sight is blinding. I'm not a finished product. Perfecting my spiritual development. And one, and let me show you how it's going to be born in you. 
it first comes through your innate inheritance. You need to accept your lineage. You need to accept it. You need to accept whatever the good are and whatever the bads are. If there are uh, health issues in your lineage, you don't hide them. You teach the children about them. There's some hidden arts in your family. You're mad about where you came from and what you didn't have rather than studying who you are. Let me show you the proof of that. Why haven't those dreams left you yet? Why haven't that vision? Now, if you, ain't having a, if you don't have no vision, you got too much junk in the closet. You, you need to clean out your closet. I ain't had no dream and I don't know when. You got too much junk in the closet. You need, to start de- you need to start decluttering right now. You need to start decluttering because you don't feel. Because sometimes the weight of your vision <laughs> will cause you to naturally become unbalanced because of the weight of the responsibility that God has placed in your life. And you're trying to find a person to pull it out of you? It's not going to happen. Nobody can't pull out of you what they didn't put in you. You can't. It's impossible, bro. If you are authentic, and that's what you're fighting, being authentic, And when you're authentic, your thumbprint doesn't match everybody else. So I don't understand why you're trying to cut your hair and and buy shoes and buy bow ties and look like everybody else and try to be like this person over here. I can't do what he did this morning, and I can't do what he did this morning, but I can do what I can do. Am I making sense? Y'all want a few more? Perfecting your spiritual development innate. You first have to embrace you. Come on. Y'all, y'all, you know, I, uh, just, just, just tap yourself and say, I have to embrace me. I have to embrace me. Every ounce, every piece of me, every time that I've let me down, I have to embrace me. And when I embrace me, then I realize how imperfect I am. That's why. I got to crucify some things. Can I make it plain? Somebody will get this. I remember the late Mother Spencer loved her dearly. And I taught finances every June. And she sat there one June and she said, and this is the Mother Church in Greenwood. And she says, I got it, Pastor. Now, mind you, Mother Spencer was paying the government and had a fixed income. She said, but for one year from now, I will be in a different place. And within a year, she came back and she said, I'm in a different place because she applied the principles and she crucified the things she needed to crucify. Here is what I I call that for this generation. You need and we need to embrace and learn the power of transition that leads to transformation. The power of transition that leads to transformation. If I can't embrace transition, then I can't embrace transformation. Stay away from people who say they don't want change. The power of transition leads to transformation, which means I have to start seeing and believing things that will become different. And trans- when I make that transition in my mind, now I can go through the transformation. The problem is you want to be healed by, from something, 
that you don't want to crucify. Because if you crucify, it's the only identity you have. That's why people are stuck on name brands. Because it gives them an identity that they don't have. That's why wealthy people don't wear name brand stuff. Their identity is their innate inheritance. Does this make sense? Here is the other thing I want you to write. This is the month we're going to begin to learn the eradication of the mindset of poverty. eradicating the mindset of poverty. I'm going to show you why, and I'm probably going to stop. I'm not even going to get to Corinthians 5 and 17. Eradicating the mindset of poverty and the behavior of brokenness. This is a time in July. Let me know when you have finished writing that. Eradicating the mindset of poverty. Poverty is a spirit. Ask me, what do you mean? It always tells you, tell you you don't have anything, so you don't appreciate anything. The Bible says despise not small beginnings. So you throw trash on your own street. You don't take care of your own car. Everyone that has a car needs to at least detail it once a year or every year and a half. Because by the time you pay, f- pay for it, the, s- the, uh, the top sealer is going to go, the paint's going to fade, then you're going to go and get in debt again. If you take care of what you have and clean your house and clean up your yard and cut your grass, then it'll have value. Eradicating the mindset of poverty. So if you don't think you have anything, guess what you'll do? You'll spend money all the time. And if you spend money all the time, you're going to be broke all the time. How can people back in the day that didn't make but 98 cents an hour make it with a wife, family, and a house, and car payments, and you're making $14, $25 an hour, and you can't wait to get paid again? Yes, there are people. When interest rates were 28% in certain cultures, how can they have a house? How can you go to grandmama's house, great grandmama's house, and it's a little bitty tiny house, a little bitty tiny house. Listen, when the interest rate is 28 and 30%, it should be tiny because you can't get that much. Now interest rates, people crying because they're 3.2, 3.5. Well, what do you think about your grandparents when they were making 98 cents an hour? And they bought a house. And you still in the hood. Back in the cut. Your priorities are not in line. That's number two. In this month, you have to start aligning your priorities. Now, what does this mean? This means this is the time to adapt and apply. You've heard great word. You've uh ahan and all of that. This is the time to adapt and apply. Just don't write it. Just don't say, I hear hear the word today, y'all. Yeah, child. It felt good. Don't mean a thing. If you don't plan it, you don't adapt it, you don't adopt it, and you don't apply it. Don't mean a thing. And I'm going to show you something. This is the period of separation. Those that adapt, adopt, and apply will get ahead of those who are just giving lip service. I'm going to stop it right there.
Y'all all in a serious mind, you got to give us something. Give us a song on the way out because this is kind of thick in here. Somebody said, it's got a little extra mustard on it today. It, it's just, you know, a little something. Let's have a song as we go. And I want to share, and stay live, stay live. I want to share with everybody as we close that thank God that we have live praise and worship back. So please come and be a part of our in-service, part of our broadcast. We're here every Wednesday from 6.50 to 7.30 and every Sunday morning. The early bird service uh, service now is starting around 8.15. And we normally try to give the word. So this is the early bird service. Thank all of you that came and participated. Thank you for being a part of our broadcast. I will look to see. We have tea and coffee at the Greenwood campus and also communion. I will look forward to seeing everyone there on the broadcast as well as those that are coming to in service. God bless you. We'll see you soon.